Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hi, happy summertime. Summertime is here, guys. Can you believe it? Today is the solstice. We're great to have you on board. I'm your host, Wade T. Lightheart from the Prosperity Health Alliance, and I'm joined by the men behind the machine right here, Mr. Seahaw Top and Creel Hutchinson. How are you doing, guys? Doing great, Wade. Doing awesome. We happy are solstice, pumped. Everybody. Happy solstice, right? Full moon and the solstice. I believe they call it the strawberry moon. So, uh, so you know, well, there you go. It's it's a strawberry season. It's time to get them washed in that Kangen 11.5 and get everything rocking and rolling. But, guys, I mean, uh, first and foremost, it's it's a month that we, we've got one month to the Enagic Convention. Book your tickets. Get on board. Enagic.com. Go there. Be there. Every person you bring to that group will add an extra 100 people to your business over the next year. 100 more. Imagine having 100 more people. So how many? So think about that. This is the numbers. This has been proven throughout history. It's events, 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 events. We need events like church people need sermons. Like you got to be there. Okay? I love church. I love sermons. You guys know that. Get people to the Kangen Sermon convention one month. Don't even think about not going. Don't even think about it. Get as many people you can. We're going to have a big picture. We're going to meet together. We're going to high five together. We're going to eat together. We're going to learn together. We're going to grow together. It's going to be a lot of fun. You're going to meet people from all over the world. You'll get this burned into your RAS. No matter if you're in the little one, tiny town of one person in Pantucket, nowhere, you're going to see how big this whole thing is. So be there. It's going to be fun. Vegas, entertainment, awesome. Make it a trip. Make it an adventure be there. But at the end of the day, it all comes down to this. It all comes down to your business is going to grow, not by the people by, that you know, it's by the people that you don't know. And how do you get to that? How do you get to the people that you don't know? Well, these two guys that are with me know it better than anybody else. The number one reason their business is growing is because they know how to get referrals. And that is by putting yourself out as a professional and setting up a system where you get referrals. We make all of our money on referrals. All of it. All of it is like someone heard about the machine, heard about the machine. This has been working for over 40 years. This is how humans have existed since the beginning of time. This is how tribal societies home. Well, now we live in a digital tribal society with the number one product in the world, okay, and the number one commodity in the world, and the number one company delivering with points of sales and service and distribution all around the planet, and all we need to do is get referrals. But there is a system. And by the way, did you know that the referral-based business is the biggest business in the whole world? It's so big, no one even talks about it because when you go to a mastermind group, when you go to meet up with your business guys in any industry, you know they sit around like, who do you know that does this? How do I get this? I've got X, Y, Z problem and I need this and they go, and, and, and they go to this. If you look at secret societies, they're based on referral groups. If you look at political organizations, they're done by referrals. If you look by professional institutions, it's all by referrals. We are a professional institution in water, and we need referrals. Guys, do you guys get referrals? All the time. That I'm That's, asking for them constantly. Right. Right? And, and, and here's the thing. A lot of people feel awkward doing a referral. I felt awkward sometimes. Oh, you know, uh, can you give me? Can you give me? Can you, can you, uh, can, can you, can you give me? I, I need 10 more people. Can you give me 10 referrals? And people are like, uh. Well, anyways. Um, we're going to get to questions after because I want to ask, you guys might ask some specific stuff, but um, speaking of referrals, I was referred to an event. So I'm at an event where people get referrals, and then that, the people, a person at that event referred me to an event about how to get more referrals. That's how deep referrals go. Okay? And it turned out that this guy I had heard about from 13 years ago, his name's Dan Locke, and I said, you know what? I, I knew this guy 13 years ago. Uh, he was starting out business and I thought, well, he's got a kind of a dorky looking website, but I like the topic. And it's was at the Vancouver Club, which is a very, very prestigious club here in Vancouver, just down the street from me. I said, you know what? 30 bucks, gotta be some good people going to this thing. I went, I got so much value out of that 30 bucks. Not only did I get some live referrals, did I connect with another guy that wants to get a machine from me? Okay, but I'm gonna share with you guys tonight. The, the, the seven strategies that you can leverage in your business. These are proven strategies. They're not only strategies. The seven proven strategies that you can use in your business to allow you to become a referral generating machine. 
So are you guys all excited about this? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> all My right, favorite. guys. So uh, let's rock and roll. I'm gonna we're gonna bring uh, Seahaw and Creel back at the end of this to ask some specific questions about them, about how they do. But I want to go through this really quickly. This is very, very, very important information that you and your team to go through, uh, and that you follow this, or just pick one of the t strategies that feels right for you and start working that right now. Because I can tell you, everybody on this call, everybody that's on this webinar, is probably sitting on half a dozen referrals that would be buying machines that they don't even know. Think about it. If you're a 2A, a half a dozen things, that's 3,000 bucks. If you're a 6A, that's like 10 grand. It's sitting there. It's waiting for you to get a referral. So let's get at it. So let's do this. Kimmy, I think we got this on the strategy. Let me pull the play button and we're going to go for this. So seven effective strategies for getting more referrals. Here we go. Now, Here's the thing. Here, let, let's talk what most people do around referral strategies. And this is what most businesses do. Number one, they hope. They hope they're going to get a referral. Uh, hope is not a strategy, okay? But this is the strategy that, well, maybe, maybe, uh, uh, maybe someone will give me a strategy. Yeah, oh, I, I hope that person finally talks to me one day that I talked to three years ago. Not going to work. Next thing, they pray. And I'm a big believer in praying, and I support praying. But, you know, you got to put works into the prayer, right? It's like most people are like, oh, God, please, 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 please help me uh, get a referral. Uh, I need a business. And, and I believe in referrals. But you gotta, you got to do the next step, and that's go out there and ask for them, right? God helps the willing. Uh, the third strategy, and this is, this is one that's all too common, and that's do nothing. Do nothing. I mean, just... Get up every day and do nothing. They don't go to the webinars. They don't go to the things. They don't learn anything. They don't go out to social events. They don't. They don't. They just don't. And that just, you know, and, and, and really, there's a big thing. And, and then in the worst stage, they go to the fourth stage, and that is to complain about reality. They complain that hope didn't work. They complain that praying didn't work and they complain that they didn't do nothing so they're blaming everybody and everything and the economy and this and that and blah blah blah, blah. you know that's what happens and and commiserating is it has become a pastime uh, around the world you go on Facebook and people are complaining and doing this everybody's upset about what someone else is doing and most of the things they're upset about has nothing to do with them but it's the smoke screen because they're doing nothing okay I, I know so and let me get this so by the way, um, this is secondhand information. I want to give that to you. I, I'm, I've used many of these strategies, and it actually was a reminder, and I'll do some personal stories on this as well. But if you want to go and get this, I believe the, the webinar was recorded on video. You can go to danlock.com and get this. Uh, I know the picture's on the cover. Of, he kind of looks kind of cheesy, but i got to say, probably one of the best 30 bucks I ever sent. i never seen anybody lay this out. So what I've got here is I've got the notes from the webinar from Dan. And, uh, I'm, and I'll say I'm giving him a referral. Obviously, you want to go deeper on this, it's great. So most businesses don't get more referrals because they don't believe they deserve more referrals. Let me ask you a question. Do you believe you deserve a referral? And, and, and why do you deserve it? Why, why, why do you deserve a referral? I mean, are you providing exceptional service? Are you providing an exceptional product? Are you going the extra mile? Do you feel confident in asking that, client, that person for a referral? Because a lot of people just don't ask yourself why. And if you do, you're going to see the kind of service that you're providing relative to the marketplace. What holds people back? And, and this is, we all got to deal with this, okay? I've dealt with this. See how I dealt with it, Chris. We all have to do this. And, and here's the four most common reasons for lack of referrals. And, and when Dan was going through this, the other day, I, I felt this. I was like, oh, oh, yeah, I can remember that one. And I remember the time that I didn't speak up at that thing. And what was it? Fear. Fear, 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 fear. Fear number one, haven't provided enough value. The feeling that you haven't provided enough value. Because maybe at one time or one place that someone said that you didn't, whether that right or wrong or whatever, and you've developed a fear about it, and now when it comes asking for a referral, you got fear. Two. Here's one that comes up big for the ladies. Feel your hurt, the relationship. Oh, 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 if I ask for a referral, they might not like me anymore. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to do it. Like, oh, I, oh, yeah. no. 
don't get into that. Fear. Here's another one. You'll look unprofessional or needy. Oh, well, there's a professional way to get a referral, and then there's a needy one like, oh, oh, oh please, 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 please give me a referral. No, 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 no. There's a professional way, and we're going to show that to you, right? And, and some of these fears are legitimate, and some of them aren't. And really, it just comes down to preparation and comes down to having a strategy that works and is effective. We're going to get to those. So fear of not knowing how to get out of the conversation. This is another one. Oh, well, you know, if I ask for a referral and it doesn't work out, then what? I don't know what to do, and I don't know how to get out. You know, all that sort of stuff. And you sit in the conversation, and you don't know how to get, you know, that sort of thing, right? We've all been there. So these are the four reasons what holds us back. So here's the thing. Let's understand why people don't refer. So the, before here, I was talking about why people don't ask for referrals. But why do people not refer? Think about this. I want you to think about this for a second. So someone asks you about something. You go to a store. You have something. And what do you feel? What are you feeling? There's sometimes where, like, I've got a chiropractor that I've probably hooked up with, I don't know, 30 or 40 clients. Why? I call him the wizard. He's the wizard because I go there and have such an amazing experience and I'm blown away and I gotta tell everybody about the wizard. They don't even know his name. They don't even know his credentials. They don't know anything. They just know it's the wizard. That's what I call him. That, that, that's how, and it feels like I, I went in there and got some spells cast. So, so let's talk about why people don't refer. They don't refer other people if they feel you're not confident the result is gonna be positive. I have another great friend. He's a super guy. I love the guy to death. He's amazing, he's a spiritual guy, he's absolutely awesome, one of the best friends I ever have, but he delivers terrible service, and he over-promises, and he under-delivers. And I've referred to people, and then they come back to me, and they have a bad experience. So now I'm like, ah, I love the guy, he's a great friend, but do I want to refer to him? No, I don't want to refer to him. Why? Because I'm not confident that the result's going to be positive. So guess what? He doesn't get referrals from me like he used to because he doesn't deliver. And the other guy, the wizard, I've given him so many referrals they can't even take. He, he's got a lineup for people because he always delivers on the experience. Okay, See the difference? And we kind of think about in your life where you've had someone that you referred because it was great or someone that you referred because you don't or referring to the right people. So that's the thing. So let's think about the last time you referred someone else. You see, referrals have the risk of a purchase. If I refer you know, somebody to say Seha or somebody to Creel for whatever reason. It's like I'm, I'm, I'm taking the trust I've built up with that person and it's, it, it's as strong, it's as risky as that person purchasing they're going to purchase. So this is a big, 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 big thing and that's why people are a little tentative to, to, to refer. Just because someone knows you doesn't mean they're going to refer you because naturally most people don't really want to refer. They just don't. They're, they're, they're kind of scared and tentative. I love referring people. I've built a business on referrals, and uh, I've helped a lot of other businesses by referrals. I love referral business. It's a great business if you do it right. And in fact, in fact I built all of my businesses, or all of, well, I should say, two out of my businesses that I've built over the, since 1998 were built completely on referrals. 100%. 100% on referrals. So. In order to get the referrals you need, you need to be what I call referable. So way back in the day when I was a personal trainer, right, I only, I only had referrals. I had no advertising. I did such a good job with my clients that they wanted to tell their clients about me. And from that, when I was doing a consultation with them, and I would offer a free consultation if, if, on a referral, and that person was already sold before they showed up. And my closing rate was over 95%. In fact, the only people I didn't close was people that I didn't like. I, I, I refer, and you know what I did? I referred them to somebody else. I said, you know what? I can't really help them, but you need to go there. So in order to do that, in order to be successful in referrals, you need to be reliable. And uh, Charlie Munger, one of the smartest, most successful people in the world, billionaire, almost the, all the smart people in the world uh, refer to Charlie Munger as one of the smartest guys ever. And that's Warren Buffett's business partner, the guy that's kind of behind the curtain. He said the most important thing to be in success is being reliable. And think about that. That's a billionaire saying you need to be reliable and you need to be able to deliver great service and products. And here's the great news. We've got an awesome, awesome, awesome 
product. We got a product that just about actually everybody does needs. Unless you're some yogi living by a, a mountain spring in the Himalayas, you need this. And if unless you're a zillionaire who doesn't need any money, most people need the business side of it. So we got a great combination of things. You know, uh, it, it's really awesome. So the thing is, is we got to be proactive, not passive in gaining referrals. So. What is the referable factor? Like, what is it? What is the big thing? And, and it comes down to this. Can you deliver what you say you can deliver? If there's one thing that I think people get set up bad in, in Enagic and in the company and doing our business and, and what we're doing here is that they, they over-promise and under-deliver. They don't go the extra mile. They don't go to the person's house to set up the machine. They don't uh, help them order the, the the products, and I'm guilty of some. I've, I've done these things, so I know. So I, you know, I, I'm not out there, and I, I, I'm not saying I'm not here to pick on anybody. I'm saying I've made all these mistakes, and I remember the ones that went well, and the ones that didn't went well, and the ones where you deliver that extra mile, you deliver the service, you do that, even if it doesn't work out the way that you think at that, you set up your reputation, and you'll be surprised at how that comes around. Here's the thing: your partners need to trust that that that. Only you can deliver the products and services and that you're consistent in living up to high business standards. So, for example, right now we had a little thing with uh, K8s. You know, they, uh, there was a big thing in the company and, like, you know, we, we ran out of K8s here in Canada, office and whatever, and they didn't know what to do with K8s. And, and the funny thing was, was uh, I was sitting with another 2-3 leader and uh, we were talking and guess what? He said, you know what, wait, yeah, I said, we were talking about the situation and, and, and you know how an adjective working to resolve it, but it's not resolved. And I said, you know what I told people? I told people, look, you got to get a K8 right now because they're on back order. We don't have any yet. So I took what most of my distributors were complaining about, and I turned it around as the reason to get in a line. Tesla just recently sold, I forget how many millions of dollars worth of pre-orders by telling them we're coming out with an electric car for thirty or $40,000. And they got people lined up waiting for a year. If you want a Ferrari or a Rolls Royce, you order it in advance. Exclusivity is fine. It's part of delivering the service, saying, hey, you know what? We're not even able to deliver this until the next. Why don't I get you on the list and we can go through the process? You see, that's being proactive. That's being consistent. Um, another thing I do is, is I tell people, I say, hey, look, you know, our, our company makes amazing machines. They make beautiful technology. It's the best. It's the most pristine, highly crafted ionizer on the planet. It's absolutely amazing. The company has points of sale, service, and distribution. They back this up 100%. It's got all these associates. But, but, but I'll tell you what, if you go to the office, they're not going, you know, they're, they're just not that great at customer service and they're not sort of thing. So tell you what, I'm going to hold your hand every step of the way and I'm going to make this experience. And we might have a few little bumps, but don't worry about it because I'm going to take care of everything. You know what? People are okay with that. People are fine with that if you tell them up front what's going on and how you're going to do it. We're paid handsomely to handle the customer service side of this business. And I want all of us to understand that, that we are the customer service. Yes, there may be some challenges and that sort of stuff, but we've got to be able to step beyond that and see the company adverse to ourselves. We're the front line of that and we're the front line of customer service because that's where you're going to get the referrals as a salesperson in this business. So here's what you need to be. You need to have the confidentiality of that person. You need to be able to confide in them and allow them to confide in you without going telling every Tom, Dick, and Harry in the neighborhood and all that sort of thing. The other thing is, is you got to live up to your brand. You gotta, you gotta own the technology. You gotta love the technology. You gotta be on the Ukon and the Anaspa and the water. You, you need all three products that you that you are a, a, a walking billboard of the product. When it comes to follow up. You need to be consistent. You've got to create a system of regular communication, right? So we create the Prosperity and Health Alliance because I knew that we weren't keeping up to connecting with everybody in the organization that wanted to reach out to, you, out to us. And so I created the system so that, you know, we have an automated sequence that we know everybody can get the same training. Everybody can get on the webinars every one, uh, Monday. Everybody can connect with myself and Siha and Creel. Everybody can ask their questions and everybody can book wait on meetme.so slash book wait. This is a consistent follow-up, okay? Now, if there's individual people, then you, you put them on through the feeder, and I think that um, in, in another seminar, 
Creel is going to go through the feeder system. I think he's got the best follow-up system of anybody I've seen. I know Seahaw's got a great one as well, but it, it's, it's amazing. So the other thing is consistent billing practices, ensuring clients get lasting value and your price doesn't vary. Find out when your UConns. Uh, if you listened to a few webinars ago, uh, Creel was talking about that. Know when your recurs are. Know when people's payments are coming in on their spots so that you can remind them and follow up and use that as an opportunity, right? Don't count on the company to do it. Take care of itself. 100% satisfaction guarantee. Make sure those things happen. How you communicate with your customers. Be proactive. Find out what their challenges are. Find out what the, the things that they love. Be interested in them. Don't just sell a machine and run away. Go to the next level. Follow up with them. Uh, when you communicate with your clients, you know when do you do that? Do you do it at a time? Do you make a point when they go? How do you promote yourself? Do you promote yourself as the expert? Do you promote yourself as the guy that's here to help them? Or do you promote yourself as the business person, the financial? How are you branding yourself and are you living up to that brand? Okay. How do you show up to a networking event? Uh, are you prepared? Are you on time? And are you well presented? This is key. This, this is key, 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 key. I, I can't tell you uh, the perception that you have and how you carry yourself when you get your best dress. And that doesn't mean you have to go out and buy a $1,500 suit or anything like that. You know what? You can go get a suit at the secondhand store and dress up and look best. You cannot overdress a networking event. Dress up, look the part, be the part, live up to the part, and guess what? Soon enough, you're the part. So, and, and show up on time. And, and on time means early. Not late, it means early. It means 10 minutes before, 15 minutes before. It means having your business cards. It means having a way to uh, provide value for people. So here, let's do a self-audit. Let's get out your pen and paper and, and, and check some of these things out or take a picture of the screen or whatever you need to do. What are some areas of your service and delivery that is inconsistent or has room for improvement? What are some areas? What, is, what are some areas? You know, one of the things I love hanging around with guys like Krill and Seahaw, they, they reveal to me the areas where I'm weak. And, and if you go through the uh, – Eric Worre has a self-audit in the Network Marketing Pro the seven skills that you know and you, and you do that do that do that do that self audit right here I want you to do something do the self audit and I do this with people so let's say on that scale it's seven things out of ten and you scored yourself a 35 go to the people that you think are at amazing at the business that are close to 70s that know you and have them rate you and compare the two ratings I bet you if they give you an honest thing they'll rate you lower than you rate yourself and that's probably more accurate Okay, because sometimes we get some people though are really hard on themselves. So sometimes you might be really hard on yourself, and people are better than you're actually better. So the other thing is, what services do you currently consistently uphold? How do you? So are you the person that will make sure that no, whatever the problem is for that person, you got it taken care of? Are you turning everybody in your organization onto the Prosperity and Health Alliance so they get training and they get the business stuff? Do people know where the websites are? Do people know how to order the products? Do people have to know, learn to know the web, uh, the web systems? Do they know when the calls are? Are you promoting the event so they know what's going on? Three, um, what business standards are you willing to create and commit to deliver? So if you're not doing this, and not all, we're not all doing this the perfect thing. I'm not perfect. I'm not, but what are the things that you want to do better? What is, what is the key? The key, the key is, is, is commit to what you can be consistent in. Okay? So here the thing is. In an uncertain world, we are selling certainty. That's what it comes down to. There's a lot of uncertainty in the world. People don't know what's going to happen in the economy. People don't know what's going to happen in the world. People don't know what's going to happen with their job, their wife, their house, their kids. They don't know. There are fear. There's fear, 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 fear everywhere, and people are uncertain. So when you represent yourself as confident and clear and someone who's operating value, you represent certainty, and people will pay a premium for certainty. They go, you know what? I get this. It's a gold standard. Here the thing is, you don't get referrals because you want it, you demand it, or you desperately need it. You only get referrals when you deserve it. You, I'm going to read that again. You only get referrals when you deserve it. So who is, when, when does a person refer? What's the two times when a client will refer? I'll tell you what. Here we go. Number one, they just had a positive experience with you. In other words, uh, you come out of the hair salon, your hair looks amazing, you walk into the, 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 the dinner party, and, and your girlfriends are there, and they're like, OMG, 
your hair looks amazing. Wow. And you go, oh, yeah, I, I got my hairstylist, uh, Dale. He, he's amazing. He, he's got up there in the zoot, zoot studio. He's got to, and they're like, oh, my God, I've never seen highlights like that. Um, who's your guy? And you say, well, it's Dale. Here's his address. Here's his number. Boom. In other words, they just had a positive experience with the person. Or you just bought a car, and the salesman was amazing. He got you a better deal. And you know, one of your friends, you're out for dinner with your friend, and he goes, hey, what, you know, wow, this is a great new car. Where'd you get it? Well, I got it from Ray over at the, uh, the Bentley dealership. Ray, Ray hooked me up, got me ahead of the line, took care of everything. It's amazing, right? You see what I mean? Okay, two. The second time is a friend expresses a need for what you represent. So I got a friend, he comes to me, and, and his back is all messed up. He's in a lot of pain. He doesn't know what to do. He's like, oh, uh, you know, what do I do? Man? Oh, God, I'm, I'm in a lot of pain. I'm like, man, you got to see the wizard. I'm like, give me his number. I'm like, there's a big lineup. I'm like, give me his number, right? So I might not have seen that friend for a long time, but I'm going to refer him to the wizard, okay? That's the chiropractor, by the way, because you forgot. So here's the number one key to getting unlimited referrals, okay? You gotta take a drink of water. I hope you are too. Keep sipping. Anyways, the key is to have your client remember you because he knows you and he knows your business or service. Okay, you gotta have your client remember you for some reason. He either knows you or your business or your service. There's an association built into your mind, and you build associations by great experiences. A bad experience is also horrible. So. You got to make sure our client understands the particular solution we provide. So back when I was uh, when I was doing my uh, personal training business, people would ask me what it was, and I borrowed this from my coach. I said, "Well, what do you do?" And I said, "I turn Pintos into Ferraris." And they, "What does that mean?" I said, "Well, I take people who feel like Pintos, and I and I teach them and show them through a step-by-step -step process of how to become a Ferrari." through a series of, of training and nutritional programs that I've got this thing down in, in, in a 12-week process. And boom, guess what? It's amazing what happens. It's amazing what happens. Okay? So um, you got to make sure that it's easy to recall. They'll remember us when they hear someone describe a need for what we do. Okay? You've got to be able to have the person recall what you, what you do in a way that reminds them. He said, oh, yeah, it's those guys, right? Okay, in the end, we want to have our clients refer us when their friends need our product or service. That's really what it comes down to. So here's the referral fundamentals. One of the fundamental referring marketing is being able to describe something unique that you can deliver to a specific kind of client. So, um, you know, I'm a health professional that works with 40-plus uh, people who have digestive issues. I take them through a step-by-step -step process that allows them to, you know, you know hydrate, and optimize their digestion through a series of diets and nutrition products. That's it. That's what I do. Or I am a, a Kangen water representative. You know, one of the things people is I, I work with a group of socially conscious entrepreneurs. I'm an entrepreneur and I work with another group of socially conscious entrepreneurs in the, in the health industry and I help uh, motivated young people build a six-figure income in the next 12 to 24 months using a step-by-step -step product process. Uh, I have an online training system and I'm partnered up with a company that's points of sales and distribution of an amazing product that transforms people's lives and we're paid handsomely for this and we're looking for key people to do this. See, I explain how I do it and what I do. Okay, and implementation is the key. You've got to implement this. So you can take this down, take a picture of it, take whatever, write it down. Um, we'll also have this on the show notes. So I'm whatever, you know, make that part of who you are. Oh, I love that. I'm working with a group of socially conscious entrepreneurs and the number one commodity in the world. We're looking for uh, motivated, self-starting people who want to make a six-figure income in the next 12 to 24 months. And we do this by teaching them an online uh, platform in combination with the distribution organization. Boom, that's it. And we're expanding in that area, whatever it happens to be. You know, you, you're kind of geared to based on the questions you've asked that person when you meet up. So here's a big thing. Um, one of the ways to get referrals is when people buy your product. So let's say people start with a water machine. So let's say you go to the thing and person starts out, there's a prospect, you meet him, 
and you go through the process, they watch one of your web videos, you follow up with a demo, you get them on the water for a couple of weeks. So they go from stage one to prospect and stage two they become a they say, you know what? Um, yeah, I want to I want to try the water. So they try the water. And then what happens is they they buy a machine. And once they buy a machine, they say, well, are you loving the machine? And they say, yeah. Well, um, we also have a, a we have a membership program where we we offer you Ucon. And the Ucon, what that's going to do is that's going to be able to double your referral commissions. It's also going to really uh, crush inflammation in the body in combination with the water. It's it's better than over five thousand. There's 5,000 studies on it. It's better than the top 10 prescribed pharmaceutical drugs. We have nutritionists doing webinars on it and everything. This is the most powerful anti-inflammatory there is. It's amazing. It comes from Ucon. Why don't I get you on one of our, our, our membership programs where you can have this delivered to your house every single month and you and your family can know the benefits of having the Ucon. And, you know, they say, well, that sounds good. And then they go to maybe the, you know, Antonina's webinar on this. We have that on the Prosperity and Health Alliance. If you check our YouTube page. We, you you got to send them to that video. Watch they watch that video. It's incredible. They want it. They want the Ucon, and you can sign them up for a membership. Now your water business has added another membership that has a recurring order. You know that you're every four months you're going to get more money, and they're going to have a better experience. And then they're going to tell people about that. And they say, hey, you know what? Christmas is coming, or summer's coming, or there's a filter service. Why don't you get on the Amazon? I mean, are, are you tired of showering in chlorine and stuff? And all of a sudden, that person owns all three of our products. Because you've asked them, and then and then and guess what? They tell their friends about it. They tell their friends that yeah, I just got the whole home house system. I got the home health system. They become a raving fan. And the people that are on this call, you're raving fans of Enagic. You're out there, and so the fact that you're on the call means that you've gone through these whole stages. You're out there promoting, actively promoting the business as we all are for Enagic. We all go through this process: prospect, customer, client, member, and event. The key is, is to move them from stage one to stage five as fast as possible. Okay? You've got to be assertive and proactive in moving the first time buyer to the customer to the committed customer. And that's going to happen through a series of somewhere between five and twelve takes. Probably on the high end. That means from introduction to getting on the water to sharing them an experience, doing a demonstration, following up, uh, handling the objections, uh, and making sure they have a great experience, all that stuff. That's all part of this. This is a big ticket item, and most people that get it sale, it, it's a process that could take it could take a week, it could take a month, it could take several months. It's worth it. The best way to have a committed cus customer is is to have it paid for on auto charge, especially if there's pain or discomfort and disconnect. But when Agic has that built in, if you if you don't uh, reorder your Ucons, you don't get sale in the point. You don't get that extra benefit. You lose part of the commissions, all that sort of stuff. There's a there's a pain to it, right? Okay, so let's keep going. Your best member is a client because they buy everything. Remember, there is a, a group. If, if you've got a, a hundred people in the list and they're and you don't have anybody that has an Anaspa or not on the Ucon, you, you're there's probably I don't know five or ten percent of the people that would if you just reached out and asked them, they'd buy an Anaspa or they'd buy an Ucon. They would. They would. There's a segment of the population that will buy the everything, the most expensive part. They want the most expensive. They want all that. So just because you might have some some limited beliefs about the price of the technology, that doesn't mean that everybody else does. Some people can't. Some people brag about how much they pay. Yeah, I just paid ten grand to set up my home health system. I got the shower unit, got the water machine. I, it blew me away when I started hitting that. That was amazing. The other thing is, is giving getting me referrals deepens the commitment of the client, which extends the life of the client, increases the spending activity of the client. I refer everybody in my business. Or, or in my friend fear, association fear, I'm always giving them referrals. I'm referring them to everything and everybody and everything. If I can help them out, I'll, I'll tell them, you know, who who does who cuts my hair, who's my chiropractor, where I get my protein shakes in the morning. I, I share with people who who's the best accountant that I know of, who's the best lawyer that I know. When I hear that they have something, and I got a friend or someone, I go, I refer, I refer, I refer, I refer my friends all the time. I even refer people to my competitors. Why? It comes back to you. People, if you if you can't provide a service and you refer it to a competitor, oh my God, people, they're going to come back to you. The more a client refers, the longer they stay, so they can refer again and again and again. We're on part of that. We're all on this because we're referring again and again and again. Here's strategy number two. I'm trying to blow through these real quick. Give people an interesting story to tell. Provide good tools to your referral partner. So what that means is. 
So the other day, for example, uh, I was on a call with somebody, and, and, and they were in the military, and I said, oh my God, i got to introduce you to my friend Roger uh, Gadet. He was the, like, the first diagnosed case of Gulf War Syndrome in Canada, and man, you know, he didn't believe in this water. He was so against it, and no one ever thought he was going to. He spent all this time in his basement, and he was suffering from all these, this pain and suffering. It's horrible. It's the most horrible story ever. And then I did a demonstration out there, and his wife saw it, and they changed the water. And, and now, after a couple years, he's off all his meds. He's all around, and they're traveling around. It's the most amazing thing ever. And I tell you what, every time I go give a demonstration, I can't wait. And that's why I believe that you should give a demonstration, too. You don't know who's in that room. You don't know who they're going to influence. You don't know what's going on. Now, people aren't going to remember anything, but they're going to remember Roger's story. And this person now wants to talk to Roger, right? They want to hear that story. So what stories can people tell about you? But believe me, people are talking about you. And this is a hard thing to believe. I have a hard time with this one. I still can't believe that people, anybody would ever talk about me. But of course they do. I mean, do you talk about your friends? Do you talk about your family? Do you talk about things? Of course you do. Everybody talks about everybody. I mean, that's just the way it is. Some people are more than others. But the bottom line is, are, are those stories out there, are they good or are they bad? Are they something that enhances your business or making you feel good about or, or something that's strengthening relationships or is it making people want to avoid you like the plague? Because oftentimes, you know, oftentimes, uh, you know, these things are earned. We earn our reps a lot of times. Sometimes we don't, but at the end of the line, if you're out there doing good things, doing all the time, and you're being that person, if you're getting some bad feedback back, you need to investigate why that is because there's probably some truth to it. You've got you to gotta look in the mirror. You've got to be hardcore about this. You know, uh, you know, be the person you're bragging about. That was, a, that was a line from a good friend of mine back in the day. A lot of find, a lot, here's the thing. A lot of people find simple, straightforward referring awkward and uncomfortable, but everyone tells interesting stories. We do this all the time. I mean, think about your best story from high school that you've told 50 million times. Think about your best adventure story that you told. Think about all these things, right? These are great stories. Humans have told stories for thousands of years. It's how we learn. We love to tell the story. So learn to tell stories. And um, there's a great, uh, if you listen to Tim Ferriss, there's a guy by the name of uh, uh, Cal Fussman. Uh, go to the podcast with Tim Ferriss. That's T I M F E R R I S S. He's the guy that wrote the Four Hour Body, the Four Hour Work Week. It's an amazing story. Anyway, uh, Cal Fussman is one of the greatest interviewers ever, and there's a great podcast on it. Look it up. And you want to hear this guy tell a story? He tells stories that are amazing. Learn to tell stories. You you have stories. You just you don't even know that you do. Okay. So again, and then provide the tools. It's easy to refer people. That's why we created the website, the PH Alliance. That's why we got the videos. Um, you can use brochures, whatever it is, but get someone, get them inside the story. Uh, the other thing is, is you got to create an information product so you can control the story being told about you. I, I, one of the things that I did when I first started, people go, wait, how did you start? And I had forgotten about this. I, I, you know, Dan brought this up, and I went, oh my God, I forgot I did that. I created a book. I, 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 I wrote a book. There was no athletes in the business. I was the first athlete that, that we knew of. I, I, I wrote a book, and... Uh, I put it together and I and I got it out into the into the world. And guess what? I made I made so much money from that book, and I built so many relationships from that book. Uh, you know, I got to meet Elvis Stoiko because of that. I got to meet Shan Stratton from it. I got to meet Dave Carpenter. I got to meet virtually every top leader in Enagic way back in the day because I had the book that they wanted to use, and I got referred to all these things, and it made me a ton of indirect referrals, and I got known as the uh, the the water guy, the athlete guy, the enagic guy. I got learned there's this guy, and I got a lot of phone calls, and I was really nice and thing. And you know what? It paid it forward, and it came back. You can use referral tools like YouTube and podcasts and events. A lot of people are creating little videos online, and using those. Here's my friend, and have people share that. The, the reason being is that allows you to control the story if you're on YouTube. You get to tell the story in your own first person and I refer people to stories so oftentimes I go you know what you the, the story behind Roger is so amazing here's what you need to do go check out this page on YouTube and I give them the link that's what I do that's what I do I, I just show them or, or this story is so great that way I'm not getting into testimonial issues and stuff like that uh, I'll give people the link uh, I just did this with a podcast I just told you about Tim Ferriss and Cal Fussman right I, I started the thing with telling you about the event in a magic way. I do this automatically. Just con I'm always getting referrals, right? 
So you must give the ideal prospect something that they didn't have before, some information or insight that helps with them. My business partner, Matt, is one of the best guys. He goes to events, and he always gives really, really, really great advice to all the people he wants to influence without, without asking for anything. And you know what? He gets all these referrals, and everybody in the industry knows how smart he is at uh, various aspects of the online business. He's amazing at it. Uh, with books, uh, you can go. You can. It's never been easier to write a book or create a book. It doesn't have to be an expert. Give them away all the time. Give a book away. I, I can't. I mean, I've given away hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of books. I've given away a lot of books. Books have been really good for me. I think are very powerful. You want to go to the next level. Want to go to the next level? Write a book, and it's never been easier. So, strike, strike, strategy number three: use powerful testimonials to generate referrals. We just talked about the Roger one. I, I told about the one where I came. The people were using my testimonial where I drank the water, made a comeback in bodybuilding, went to the national championships in three weeks instead of training for three months and one other thing. That was all over in Nagic for years. Okay. Well, that's because I gave a powerful testimonial and that generated referrals. People were coming to you're the water guy. Uh, help your clients write testimonials. Some people aren't good at it. Some people can't do videos. By the way, if you're doing, the, the trend is now, if you're going to do the videos, do it on an iPhone. People believe those more. It doesn't have to be all superized, custom, just from the heart. What happens to people? They're great. Um, you can also put them on your website. You can put them on your secret file. I have one guy, Lou. He had all these really amazing testimonials stored on his iPhone. So he would just click on the iPhone video that was relative to the person and say, hey, check this out. Don't listen to me. Listen to this guy's testimony. Boom. You do that one-on-one. -on -one. Um, the higher ticket, the, the longer the testimony. The big, we got a big ticket item, so don't be afraid of those long uh, testimonials uh, on video. Uh, the other thing is, send other people referrals. Always, always, always be referring. Uh, I refer every, every person that I'm in business with or that I'm friends with, I give consistent referrals. And it's, it's, it's just coming from a mentality of abundance and being helpful. So um, the thing is, is do you deliver an experience that people want to pass along? If you deliver an amazing experience or a very amazing service or you're a great person, guess what? People want to pass that along. So the thing is, how much, how much do you demonstrate that you are the best person to handle your client's particular problem? How many, how many of you are out there saying you are the de facto solution to everybody's issues around hydration or financial uh, are, are you Morgan as a, as a hydration a health person? So I started out as a health person. I started out in this business. I, I figured I was the best guy that anybody could talk to about the athletic side of what Congan Water did. That's how I marketed myself off the first. I didn't know anything about the business. Now, now I've I, I don't talk about that so much as I talk about how I'm able to help people uh, make more money in their lives with the business. I, I've switched. So decide where you want to be. Another strategy number five, use reverse prospecting. So here's how this works. Reverse prospecting is re you reverse engineering your client's network of, of, of contacts to them. So you go to something like you go to LinkedIn and you see who they're associated. They're a bunch of engineers or they're a bunch of, let's say, so, so in this case, they're, they're a bunch of, uh, you know, uh, they're a bunch of mortgage brokers. And, uh, and I said, hey, you know what? I, I met this guy as a mortgage broker. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to tell them a story about how, you know, I, I met this mortgage broker back, you know, seven or eight years ago. It was during the crisis. He had a whole bunch of challenges with what happened. And then and got together. And we started showing this business. He told me he could do what he took him 20 years in this business. He could do it in two. And he's gone on and he's built an amazing life. He's transformed his health. His whole family's healthier. He's making a ton of money. He's changing people's lives. He's traveling around the world and he gets to drive his kids to and from school every week. He's amazing. By the way, his name's Seattle Top. Can I introduce you to him? But do you know anybody like that? You see what I mean? Different. Right? I got a story about everybody. Fred Brown, if you get a chance at, at, at the Enagic Convention, go hang out with Fred Brown. And listen to him tell stories and get referrals. It's amazing. Uh, referral strategy number six. Let your client know you'll be asking for referrals right on. Hey, good. So you call up, you know, uh, hey, Krill, my name's Wade, and I'm the owner of uh, this. You know, I'm, I'm aware of the, the Prosperity and Health Alliance. Before you get into it, I'd like to let you know about how we work with our clients. Would that be okay? And they go, sure. I said, I get about 80% uh, of our business from referrals, and I'd like to work with people just like you. So what I'd like to ask, if you being a if, 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 if you like what's going on with our product and service, I want to refer to people. Would you refer to people just like me? I'm not asking for them right now. But at some stage, if you think that you've got great value, I'd like 
and get a referral from you. Would that be okay? And they say, sure, you know, that's no problem. Now here, now, you know what? And here's the key part, the takeaway. The takeaway. You know, I've been thinking, give it a second, else. I'm beginning to think that I may have been over, overly hasty in asking for a referral. See, I'd hate to disappoint them by not being able to live up to your service. Wow. Wow. Powerful stuff. Here comes strategy number seven. Make giving a referral a part of doing business with you. So back in the day, and I didn't even know that I was doing this, and, and I realized it is the only way that you could get a, a, the only way that you could get get to me or find me. The only way is you had to get a referral. I didn't do any advertising. So people would the only way they would come to me is if they were a referral. And so you know you, you come up with that with a commitment statement to yourself and to your business of what you've committed to do. Make a video. And advertise the fact that you only accept clients who are referred to you by your client. Say, hey, look, I only work with people who I, I, I love and trust. I'm going to go the extra mile, and they only come from referrals. You make that statement and watch what happens to your business. So here's a bonus one, and that is create your own events. So back in the day, one of the ways that I was able to uh, increase social proof about the business, because I knew I had a lot of new distributors that didn't have a lot of experience, they didn't know a lot about the water, they didn't know how to do demos. So what I did is I hosted a high on health party the last Saturday of every month. And by the way, I'm making that comeback very, very soon. Look for it. I uh, just got into a new place that allows me to do that, so I'm excited about it. So here's the thing. You host an event, and you get people to come to that event, and you make it fun. The thing is, you need to be one of three things. You need to be the speaker, you need to be the organizer, or you need to be the host. One of those three things. So. Nowadays, I get a lot of engagements. Uh, I'm asked to be a speaker at a lot of events. So when you're a speaker, you get all kinds of referrals. You get all the light shining on. But that only happens because of organizers. I've made more money for the organizers than I ever have as a speaker. So if you're not a speaker, be an organizer and get the speakers in. I was down in Richland uh, last week. And uh, with Amanda and Vijon, hi, guys. I know you guys are doing an amazing job out there. And it was so great. Because I'm up on stage doing the whole event. They, they organized the event, but they just sat in the back of the event, and I did the whole thing. But guess who's going to make a ton of money? Vijon just did 10 sales the other day in one day. Uh, think about this. Why, why is this working out? They, they brought in the person. They brought it up. Their whole group gets trained. They sat in the back of the room and took care of their kids, and that's what they need to do. They organize it. They had people that contributed, that helped the front, that were hosting it, that were enrolled. Get people enrolled in this. It's very, very, very powerful. So be one of the, be a speaker, be an organizer, be your host. How many people, you know what, I, I want to do some events. If you want to help me out, let me know. I'll, I'll, you can be one of the organizers. Happy to help you, right? Okay? You got a place? You want to host an event? Great. Host an event. The thing is, is you got to give clients a reason to talk about you and actually bring your referrals directly to you. You know, I started doing those uh, high on health parties years ago, and guess what? I was in a restaurant last summer in uh, the Cactus Club in Yaletown. I'm having dinner with a couple of friends. The waitress comes up to me. She starts talking or whatever, and she goes, wait a minute. Aren't you the guy that has the health parties? I hadn't had a health party there in, like, three years. And she remembered me, and we got into a conversation. She got a book from me. And it translated into some business down the road. I mean, isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? That's how powerful these are because I had a reason for people to talk about you. Okay? There's an, here's an advanced psychological insight about outside of business. Most of the introductions start in a group setting. And the reason why they start that there's less pressure on everyone, which allows for a great relationship to begin. Okay? This is really, really important. Most, most people met their wife or their husband at a group setting or their boyfriend or their girlfriend. They met their business partners. They, they met people at a group. You've got to get out to these groups. You've got to get into organizations where you can meet people and connect. And just be of help and be of service. And you'll be amazed at what happens from that. Join some clubs. Join some groups. Uh, what are some ideas? Attend seminars. Go to luncheons. Uh, be, be part of book signings. Uh, participate in parties. Get involved in social activities, sports activities. Maybe you're into dragon boating or something. I don't know. Uh, teleseminars, get people on teleseminars, join teleseminars, have people watch teleseminars with me, with you. Google Hangouts, Facebook live streams, all this stuff. There's so many group settings, ideas, things like get these things rolling or join them or get people involved with you. 
Here's some affirmations for you. And I, I want you to, to, you can do that if you're struggling with getting referrals. You can do this. I embrace the referral market. I believe that asking for referrals is a safe thing to do. I constantly give referrals and I expect to get referrals. So take a picture of these, write these things down, um, get this inside your head because this is important and I'm going to go back. I know we ran on pretty long. We want to get to your questions. Guys, you want to uh, jump back on the screen here and uh, we, can see you, we can see you all. Wait, that was awesome. Uh, are we going back? To, are we? Are we here on the? How do we get to the screen sharing, uh, Kimmy? So I see the guys. Can I see the guys? Oh, there you are. There we go. Now I can see you guys. There we are. Okay. <laughs> was lost. So guys, um, I know we're going to go to some questions here. Any things that you want to add about getting referrals? But this is really huge. I, I one thing I would add. I, be the type of person you would give a referral to, you know. So for me, um, in the last five and a half years, I've really upped my professionalism, even from my my dress, how I would show up for things. Um, you know, business was not something that I um, went to school for or studied. I didn't have a sales background, so this is all taught on the fly. And I realized um, that I wanted to present myself as somebody who was an expert. Um, who could get the job done? Um, because re realizing, you know, with uh, Jordan Belfort stuff, people will buy from you when they have the, all three tenants lined up as a ten. So you've got the company, the product, and you. So if someone's not buying, take a step back and be like, well, which one um, is not working, and and which one do I have to create more value around? And I found for myself, I'm like, I gotta create more value about my, me. So that I'm a 10 always in that, and um, how I dress, how I show up, professionalism, super positive. Um, I know I have an amazing product. I, I'm willing to get emotional, ask some prying questions, because I realize I have super value to give to somebody's life. So I'm not afraid about offending someone. How could I possibly offend somebody when I'm trying to really, in some cases, save their life? You know, And, and that's wholeheartedly how I, I feel about it. So. I, I think bringing that kind of intensity and um, really owning who we are and what we do um, gets me a lot of referrals. Because um, people know when they send people to me, I'm going to take care of them. And I'm going to show them great customer service. I'm going to follow up with them. I, I check in you know, three weeks later, six weeks later, how's your experience? You know, I called 50 people this month letting them know there was a filter sale and letting them know that there was also a, sp a special on uh, the uh, member's uh, price on the Anaspa because I, I felt like I just got to tell people about this and it looks like we got one sale happening there. So, you know, going above and beyond the call of duty as, a, as being a salesperson for Enagic, if you're not doing that, it's hard to get referrals. You've got to stand out in a crowd of very active, vocal, common water distributors in certain places and really you're how I present myself, it, you know, is my calling card. It is my business card. And, and just to qualify this, folks, for those who didn't know Krill back in the day, so Krill would come to my events, and he had big dreadlocks, and he had like the Burning Man gear going on, and these crazy earrings that came out of his head. And I mean, oh. I mean, I, Krill was definitely not someone that you would you imagine today. So. And now he shows up in a polished suit, clean cut, great vest, looking great. You know, I mean, the transformation is unbelievable. And Creel, the fact of the matter is, he's probably the best professional in my entire organization from his level of organization, detail, follow-up, and structure. And the thing was, you never would have known that in the presentation of the package before. Just part of it's his nature. But he, let, he, he took ownership of who he was as a person in the business. And, uh, you know, I'm always, uh, I, I look up to Creel for that, uh, for that aspect, Creel, so I really appreciate that. And it's amazing to see that transformation that we all go through. And, and, I, and I always have a thing, anything worth doing well is worth doing bad. So it doesn't matter where you are, 
do it bad until you can do it good. You know, like, you know, no one starts out as the, the all-star, the superstar, the legend, the, the, the best of the best. Like, I can't tell you how many mistakes I've made. I made all the mistakes. An expert is someone who's made all the mistakes in a very narrow field. Okay? So at the very top of this list is the person that's made more mistakes than everybody else. See how you want to add to the, the uh, referrals because I know I, I do. Out. This is I do. Thank you, Wade. That was excellent. The referral business is so important. It is seventy to eighty percent of my business from the very beginning until now. And I I I, I want to share with people how to get the referrals because that's really important. You you hit on a lot of the key things. Um, Creel, you mentioned about the filter sales every year I take advantage of the filter sales every time it comes out I have a prepared uh, email that goes out to all what I call distributors people that have our machines but don't aren't doing the business per se and so my, my uh, the filter goes out to them with a with a with a gentle note to say it's time you know it's summertime it's time to you know get a new filter just in time for the filter sale you, I just sent one out and it literally said you have 12 days left you know to get your filter on sale if I'm around, I'll come and install it for free. That gets you in front of the people. And once you get in front of the people, because they're calling you, of 300 emails that I sent out, and I have all of them, nine replies, nine new filter sales. But more important than the filter sales is all of these people want me there to, to replace their filter and do a quick e-cleaning and a quick course. And every time I've ever done that, I always get some sort of a sale. I always get a referral, and from that referral, I get a sale. So it's, I have a letter ready to go. If anybody wants to see that letter, it's really just a push of a button and I can send you that letter. So, Well, how about uh, what we'll, we can do? Um, we'll send out that letter on the Prosperity and Health Alliance this week. You can forward it over and we can just send sure. it out to them. Absolutely. So I have that prepared. And, and uh, I have the videos even on the e-cleaning. I have the videos. You know, just a few things that's just enough information for people to go, I got to call CIHA. And they do. They call me or they, you know, so that I can get that done. So the timing is everything for that. I made a list, you know how we have a prospect list when we first started our business? Well, I make lists consistently, I make lists of people who um, can refer me business. And I have, just real quickly, I want to go through, I've got 10 people that consistently send me business, consistently send me business. Because like Wade said, I'm a professional. I know what I'm doing, so they know that they have the confidence and, and they can rely on me to follow through with everything. My number one referral person is a nail tech from Portland. Number one. Okay. Uh, there are certain criteria that I'm looking for, just like when I'm recruiting um, for business entrepreneurs, for somebody who's going to uh, give me a referral. I'm looking for somebody that puts a smile on everybody's face. If you, if you know that person that puts a smile on everybody, that's what I ask. Who do you know that puts a smile on everybody's face? That's who I want to meet. That, I'm, looking for some, I'm looking for people who are successful, the, the best in their business like a Wade Lightheart, like an Antonina, whoever, because if they're not doing the business, I know that they have clients that trust them already, just like my, uh, just like my, my nail tech gal. People love her. Uh, they know her in the community, and they know her at, at her church. So when she says, you know, this machine did this for my family, they're buying it. She doesn't want to do the business because she has her nail tech business. So she just refers them to me, and I put in notes, I do it all which means from start to finish when she gives me a referral, I follow up on that lead, I get that lead the information that they need, and I open that business or close that for her. Done. Next. That's my number one person. Another, uh, going down my list, a financial planner. I work with a financial planner who has our machine, doesn't want to do this business per se because it conflicts with her business, but sends me leads. She sends me local leads as well as she sends me international leads because she just so happens to have family in China, in Taiwan, in Hong Kong. That I get a lead every other week or every three weeks consistently from her, whether it's a client or a family member. Um, so financial planners, who do you know as a financial planner? My colon cleaning therapist in Portland, the number one colon cleaning therapist, she has her business. So she has a condo lot. All these people that, that I get uh, leads um, Consistently, they have our Kangen water machine, and they know about the business, but they don't want to do that, and that's okay. I'll do it. I will do it. I will place the sales where it needs to be. I will handle it, and I put in quotes again, I do it all from start to finish. I want to make this process as easy as I can for that person that is referring 
and to keep on referring to me. Okay. Uh, next person I have is my nat is a naturopathic doctor out of Portland. I do presentations at her office regularly, and every time I do presentations at her office, I always get sales. She's a referral. She's not going to close down her office to do the Enagic business. But she loves our product. She, you know, uh, doesn't want to teach on it after hours. So I come in and do that for her. So I look at that, you know, as a referral base consistently. The roofer, the number one roofer in all of Bellingham, happens to be Topside Roofing. I like the name as well. Topside Roofing. And the roofer. He has this in his office. He has our Congo water machine in his office. He has it had it as home as well. And so in the office, I go in and I train on the staff, his secretaries. This is a roofing company. What the heck am I doing? I'm training the staff, and the staff is training the other workers. Like when they get a cut or they get a nail in their, 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 their hand or whatever, they know how to use the 2.5. Then they get results, and they talk about it. That's a consistent referral base all the time. He's a roofer. Why, why am I getting referrals from roofer? Because he wants to be a roofer. He doesn't want to be an enagic distributor. And that's what I want to express to you folks, is that just because they're not building the business, doing the business, does not mean that you can work the business with them. And they have the machine, so he's getting a check every time. These people are two, three, four, five A's in the business, and honestly, they don't know how to do a, an application. They don't know how to fill out. They don't, all they know is they refer to client, and at the end, the client is getting their machine, and they're happy, and they're hearing more about it, and I come in. Um, number six, uh, other top networking uh, uh, leaders and entrepreneurs from other network marketing companies. I have befriended some of the best people in other companies, which you know they can't, they're not going to quit their network marketing business. And, they, and for some, they don't want anybody to know about it. That's fine. Refer them to me. I'll take care of it. Again, I do it all from start to finish and everything in between. If their client has a question, if they have uh, a concern, if they have a request, whatever it is, that's our job. We're the service. You know, like Wade said, we are the professional. We have to be for the professional so that they can rely on us and they can trust us. You know, we're going to follow through and it's not going to fall through the cracks. That's what they're doing. Um, my real estate agents. I have a real estate agent who believes in, the, in, in practicing in good health. Um, and uh, but again, does not want to do this business. So what do they do? They refer the clients to myself. Um, insurance agent. I have an insurance agent, 50 years old, got on the Congo water, loves the water, is doing marathons for the first time in her life. Um, I signed up for a gym membership. Is signed up for CrossFit. She absolutely loves it. But is she going to get out of her insurance business? No, and I don't expect her to. But I do expect her. To, to give me leads, give me referrals, and I will follow it up from start to finish. I take care of all of it. She's out there tooting the horn. She's like Wade said, they got to be raging fans. They are raging fans of the product, and that's what I ask them to be, and I'll take care of the rest. Um, that was my number eight. Number nine, I have a government official from the Marshallese Island, and I can't disclose who he is, but he's very well connected. You know, he's, he's a government age official. He's not going to step down from his post to, to start saying, hey, I do an adjunct, you know, distributorship. I don't expect that. But you know what? He has a lot of strong contacts, both here in the U.S. and there in the Marshallese Islands. I've been able to Skype. I've been able to email. I've been able, as a matter of fact, he's putting, how he gives me leads, he puts me in front of the community leaders, the Marshallese Islands community leaders all over the world because that's his, that's, that's his, um, I, I guess that's his job, is to stay in contact with all these communities around the world. And he loves his products. You know, he knows I'm reliable. He knows I'm going to take care of them no matter where they're at in the world. He sends me just leads. He's a government official. He's not going to quit his post. That's fine. Give me the referrals. And my last top ten is uh, family and friends. Family and friends. They all have the product or they don't have the product, but most of them do. 99% of them have the product. They are going to refer me because, you know what, they don't know anything about it. They just utilize it. Perfect. Those, I'm not kidding you when I say 70 to 80 percent, maybe even 90 percent of my business is referrals. I'm not afraid to ask for it. I'm not afraid to follow up. I'm not afraid to close that. So you have to have that confidence in your product, in your company, in yourself, and then you just move forward. 
Um, so that's my tips for referrals and who you should be looking for. So best of luck and go ask for those referrals, you guys. Uh, nothing but uh, solid gold in the top 10 list for referrals. And uh, for, for many people, if there was a key component that uh, you said on that and, and you said, I do it all. And when you say that, there's a confidence that comes over there and you do do it all. And I think a lot of people don't know the genius of being excellent. We've all had bad service. We've all had mediocre service. We've all had an okay experience. But you know what? When you have an amazing experience, you tell people. And if there's one thing that I know that uh, you know Siha does is he provides an amazing experience, and everybody know loves being around him. He's the most loved distributor, and I think all of the magic. So, uh, and by the way, do you know how we met? We met through a referral. Referral. That's how. That's how. I didn't know Siha. I knew a guy that was was trying to sell me a house. And uh, and then I was referred to, Seahaw was referred to me to help him with his health. There we go. That's how it was. Creel was brought to me on a referral from, you know, a girl that I wrote a book with. That was a referral. I didn't know these guys. The people who are going to build your business, you don't know. They're going to be referrals, maybe a referral of a referral of a referral of a referral. Believe me, figure out who you are in the business. Provide that service better than anybody else. Commit to it, own it, make it cool, make it fun. I do it all, right? Or yes. make it exclusive. I had a guy say, hey, this person wants to know about, they're, they're kind of like not sure if they can afford this. I said, listen, the only people I talk to on the meetme.so book waves are people who are serious about the business. That's it. I don't want to sell a water machine. I don't want to talk about the benefit. No. Are they serious? Book a call. They're not serious? They're not They're not call. So that's how I've established myself. See how I was doing it all? I'm like, I only want to deal with these people. You can do whatever it is for you. Let's uh, uh, open this up to questions right now. I know it's kind of a long one tonight, but this is such a big, 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 big topic that we all need to, we, we all need to master this. So um, we got anything. So Siha, uh, do, do you give compensation to people who refer new customers? If you have your questions, put them in the question box. No, I don't. I don't give them comp compensation. What I do do is they're, they're the ones that I listed already have the machines. If they don't have a machine, I I I talk them into a tokerai, or I talk them into you know, I, I, I don't, the Tokarai, I don't offer that to just anybody. I've got to know that they're a professional. I've got to know that they, you know, want to do something and that they're going to bring value to our, our business as well as I'm going to bring value to their business. So I don't give compensation. I give them um, the Tokarai product because I want them in the game. And when they see a check, because I say that check is coming from my company. It's not coming from me. It's not coming out of my pocket. It's coming out of companies. And if it doesn't, you know, why waste it? So they look at it that way. They go, okay, you know, it's not coming out of Seattle's pocket. Great. So the answer is no. I don't give compensation. Yes, I do either get them to buy a machine or I token ride them in. Oh, just for the record, I've only token ride maybe six people in my career. Okay, great. That, that's a that's a that's a good thing. So, um, any other questions or any other final thoughts? I don't see any more questions here tonight. So I think we answered a lot. It's a lot uh, we kind of threw on the, a lot of spaghetti noodles we threw on the board. Anything you guys want to finish up with tonight? No, I think we're golden. Oh, I, I, uh, uh, what was it? Um, global tickets available. I know that Creole had some that were on sale, and I know that some other friends have some that uh, uh, are available as well at the $150 price. So I just wanted to get that out and let everybody know: get your people there. Get yourself there. Like Wade said, you know, share a ride, share a room, share whatever you have to do because this is going to change your life. If we're looking for a paradigm shift, I hope that this is it. If you haven't had that paradigm shift, I hope this is the shift that so many of us have, have discovered going to these events. The top, one of the top teams, Amanda Vijan, they'll tell you it was an event. Shelly Osley, she'll tell you it was an event. So many of our top people, including myself, Creel, Antina, Wade, we know it was an event somewhere that really pushed us to the next level. I truly mean that, and I want you guys there. 
hundred percent guys so as you know a Nagic convention you can get the tickets at anagic.com or you can contact Creole or Seha you know how to reach us they have a few extra tickets kicking around you want to jump on board this times running out you want to get to Vegas you want to get those referrals you want to get as many people as many people as you can to get to this event because it's going to change people's lives people make big decisions and for every person that you get to the Enagic convention that's going to amplify times a hundred in the course of your business that is not an exaggeration that is how powerful events are and it'll happen in ways you can't imagine but the first person you gotta get there is you so that's where it all starts that's where it all ends start to finish Here's my guys, the best guys in Enagic, Prosperity Health Alliance. Thank you, Siha. Thank you, Krill. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Um, really, really want to thank you so much for putting out so much effort, being here on the call, showing up, doing your best. It's worth it. Keep doing it. Keep growing. This is a personal development program with a compensation program attached to it. So stick with it. We're here for you. See you next week. Love you, Night, guys. Everybody. Bye for now.